And so begins our fifth entry in this series about talking about who the best mains are for each character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Our question of the day is a bit relevant to the characters that we'll be speaking about in this video. Who do you think is the worst character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate thus far? There's definitely a few characters that some people say are the worst characters or one of the worst characters, but who do you think is the worst of the worst? And before we get into that, I want you guys to remember to check out ProGuides.com through Instapro to help you get the most out of the time that you're putting into Ultimate. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to Instapro along with a plethora of exclusive content, all posted daily. Check the link in the description below for more about Pro Guides. But with all that squared away, let's talk about the best Sheik main in the world, Void. Void's story just in Smash Ultimate is a long and complicated one, so we're going to go a bit lighter on the start of a Smash 4 than we have with the other players who were marquee names in the Smash Wii U entry. There's not really much of a buildup on a Hawaii native turned SoCal resident going from just being a kid playing Smash in the basement to one of the best in the world. Just looking at his results that started his career give me a whiplash and a tinge of envy. He started out his career in February 2015 with a 33rd at Apex and just a year later he'd be getting second at the 2016 entry, beating out Niatono, Mars, Sinji before being double eliminated by the buzz. This drastic improvement over just a year came as no surprise to anyone with a second at ESAM Saga, a fourth at Genesis 3, a first at Glitch 1, and fifth at Pound 2016, all demonstrating just how good Void was. These kind of performances led him to be placed as the eighth best player in the world on a PGR version 1, a list that he never left despite the balance adjustments to Sheik that drew many others off the character, especially after the 1.1.5 patch released in March 2016 which nerfed the character heavily. His consistent and quality placements through all of the game's life cycle had Void listed as Smash 4's 11th best player in the world right behind Mr. R, another Sheik main that would soon be faced with a similar character crossroad with the release of Smash Ultimate. It must have been tough for Void to finally give up on Sheik after staying true to her throughout the entirety of Smash 4, but I think the prize money from his early placements like first at Super Splat Bros and SoCal Chronicles and second at Genesis 6 made those wounds heal much faster. And this early success with then considered one of Ultimate's best characters didn't fade as players learned more about the game. Although we didn't see Void win any more tournaments around the first half of 2019, he continued placing very well, getting 7th place at Ultimate Summit 1 and 5th at the Heart of Battle. These runs all added up to Void being able to crack into the top 10 once again with this placement as 9th best in the world behind Nairo at the Spring 2019 PGRU. But around that time that list was released, disaster struck for Void in the form that he knew all too well. The high tier character that he main, this time Pichu, was hit with a huge string of nerfs in the patch of 3.10 that came with Ultimate on March 30th, 2019. At first, Void didn't pay the changes too much attention and he continued on like nothing happened, just like he did with Sheik back in 2016. But that plan wasn't going to work this time. He began to fall from his place from the top 10 and fast. He tried a variety of characters like Joker, Roy, and Wolf to help fill in the gaps that Pichu now had, but nothing seemed to click for Void. No one except his old friend Sheik. The character wouldn't be buffed until January 2020 in the 7.0.0 patch, but she still worked as the best partner for Void's Pichu to stop the ranking bleed for the second half of 2019. This solution to Void's character crisis came around Glitch 7, where CLG fans were able to regain some hope in their boy, with the 9th place finish finally picking up some PGR wins yet again against Yeti and Leon, one with each of the character. And the weekend after, he made this light even brighter by making his first major top 8 appearance at main stage since Smash and Splash more than three months prior. His road to fifth place included losing a game five set against the best player in the world, MK Leo, while grabbing many more wins over players like MBD, Mudace, Prodigy, and Salem. Void was well on his way to salvaging his second half of 2019 if he was able to keep this up for just three more months. We knew at this point he probably wasn't returning to top 10 status, but with the summit spot he earned from that run at main stage, he'd have a ton of chances to show just how good he is with Sheik and the fact that Sheik and Pichu should not be overlooked. But you know that's not what happened, right? <laughs> Void's second season of Ultimate ended just as disastrous as it started. 65th at the Big House 9 being upset by both Trellis Banjo from Texas and giving up after losing Game 1 to Stas and Losers. A mixed bag at Summit 2, finishing 13th losing to Esam, Meister, and T while beating Nairo. And then another 65th at Congo Saga to cap off the year, losing a pair of Game 3 sets to Gax, Ness, and Winners and then being eliminated by Luis and Losers. He was still thankful to make the PGR of his incredible peaks 
but these valleys made him drop 29 spots to being the 38th best player in the world. The next largest drop on the list was down 12 spots by Cosmos, which feels like nothing in comparison to Void. And in 2020, it's remained pretty bad for the Sheik champion. The season is currently on hold at the moment, but it feels like we're seeing a Smash 4 career happening in reverse. From Apex 2015 to 2016, we saw Void go from a 33rd to a 2nd just a year later. From Genesis 6 to Genesis 7, we saw Void go from a 2nd to a 65th. We know he's a talented player, and he's shown his ability to make Sheik work in Ultimate just months ago, so what's the missing piece? I'm completely perplexed myself, and it seems like Void is too, but I'd like to hear your takes on it in the comments below. But even with these struggles, he's still the best Sheik main by far, which may bring up some red flags for some about the quality of the character for some. So we do unfortunately have to cap off another one of these mini documentaries on a sour note, but that might only be for now, because there's still so much more ultimate to play, and Void has never been one to give up so easily. Let's continue on our journey by talking about the best Zelda main in the world. Then, Zelda has been in Smash since the series' second entry, but has always been inhabited by being a bottom tier, despite having arguably the best down B in both Melee and Brawl. But many have been trying to make her work despite all the naysayers throughout the years, with Ven having done the best job with making a mark on the princess, especially as of late. The road to Ven's recent handful of upsets in Ultimate, which we'll touch on in a moment, was far from a pretty one. Ven, who is based out in Las Vegas and sits at third best on her latest power ranking, started competing in the Brawl days and was especially active during Smash 4. He grabbed a smattering amount of good wins in 2016 to 2018, including the likes of Mr. E and K9, but never was able to make it far in bracket. 129th at Genesis 3 and 5, and 65th at 2GG's Greninja, Zero, Westside, and Hyrule Saga should paint a picture of Ven's struggle. This context is important for seeing Ven's jump with the release of Ultimate, now only missing top 64 at two events since the game came out. And the quality and depth of the events he's gotten 33rd at or better is incredible. Prime Saga, Smash and Splash 5, CEO, Smash Con, Genesis 7, and Frostbite are just a few to name on the list. He's even already gotten close to matching his best wins he picked up through the entirety of his Smash 4 career here in Ultimate, stealing a set from Esam's Pikachu at Prime Saga and from Frozen's Palu at CEO. With a few more wins in neutral, this list could have been crazy as Ven almost picked up a win on MKLeo, Glutiny, and Sam Sora as he took them all the final game when they met in bracket. When you put this all together, it looks like Ven is on the right recipe for becoming a household name in the Smash community. I wouldn't be surprised if we soon saw those 33rds turn into 25ths or 13ths, some of these Game 5s finishing in Ven's favor, or maybe even one of those top 50 spots going to a Zelda main. So be sure to be on the lookout for Ven to put Zelda on the map in late 2020 and maybe start practicing the Zelda matchup if you live anywhere near him. And then next we have Doc. By all accounts, Doc is a worse Mario and the community as a whole appears to agree on there being a few notable players who can use the character. Players like Luis and Stroder used to dabble in using the Doc as a secondary, but now we have both seen those opt out into using Mario instead when they go down their death chart. We do have to pick someone though, and the generally accepted answer when talking about the best Doc is Sumutsu from Japan. But really, there's not much to say either, especially without an intimate understanding of the middle tier players in the Japanese Smash scene. He dropped from 31st in the region on the first half of the 2019 PR to 41st in the later rank of 2019. To help contextualize how the 41st best in Japan translates to the rest of the world, Sue and his Terry were ranked 9 spots higher as 32nd on the list and Mr. 50th best Ron was ranked 15 spots higher at 26 on that PR. So if Samuso was hypothetically dropped into a weaker region, he'd probably be a top 10 player there, but unfortunately, he drowns in a sea of talent in his home region and hasn't had the chance to travel to see truly how he stacks up against other players. Hopefully we'll have to come back and update this before the series is over, but for now, Doc's biggest fan has only enough results for a brief footnote. And instead of continuing on in order to Pichu, who we're saving for a long one to start off in part 6, we're going to instead finish this one off by talking about the best Falco main in the world. Juice. Philadelphia's current second best player behind Enzo started out his ultimate career sticking with what he knew how to play, Zero Suit Samus like the days of Smash 4. This fared out pretty well for the first half of 2019, getting solid 33rd at events like Smash and Splash and Prime Saga, but around that third quarter of the year is when he started making the bird his number one. 
and although he still does dabble with the bounty hunter on occasion, he's a self-proclaimed Falco and Greninja dual main according to his Twitter bio. And probably a big factor for him to commit fully to his Switch was a 13th place showing at Shine 2019, which stands as the best in his Smash Ultimate career so far and the best major placement by any Falco main. With the Ultimate's least used Star Fox character, Juice beat Myron, Best Ness, and Light before losing a Game 5 set to Jakal and eventually being eliminated by Tweak. Juice then went on to finish 2019 strong, following this with the 25th at Glitch 7, beating Frozen and losing the run back against Light at a 7th at Tri-State Showdown, beating Rivers and a great Gonzalez. And while these definitely were quality showings at S, A, and B tiered events respectively, they weren't quite enough to earn Juice a global recognition on the Top 50 or the Fall PGRU X Factor survey. But he's definitely right on the verge of hanging out with the big names as evidenced by his placement in Orion algorithm based rankings from 2019 that has him placed as the 81st best player in the world for the year one over Area 51 member Leffen and X Factor ballot player Dio from Japan. 2020 has been a mixed bag for him so far, with an incredibly underwhelming 65th at Big Moves and 129th at Frostbite, sandwiching a top 8 finish at Overclock 4 where he beat the 28th best player ranked in the world, Leon, and Mystery at the event. So it's tough to say if 2020 will finally be the year that Juice makes his PGRU debut, especially with the weird ranking season we're about to have, but we can say with confidence, if you're looking for the best player to learn the bird from, Juice is your man. And that's another entry of the best main series in the books. Let us know if you agree with the choices that we made so far, and who you expect to see coming up with the characters we have coming up soon, like Pichu, Ganondorf, Mewtwo, and Roy. And if you somehow haven't already, be sure to scroll down the video and subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any of the amazing competitive Smash Ultimate content that we have for you in the future.